In this video I show you how to replace the rear brake pads and rear brake discs in an Audi A3 TDI 1.6 2010. This is very similar to many other Volkswagen Audi Group vehicles. What you need is uh, a jack to lift the car up and then you've got to prop it on some axle stands. You've got the wrench to unfasten wheel nuts and a security wheel nut there. You've got some WD-40, a rear brake winding tool to wind back the piston, a couple of hammers, hammer to knock off the, the disc if it's stiff, old screwdrivers. Uh, you need a, a, a pipe so you can take some brake fluid out of the reservoir when you squeeze the piston back so we're going to jack up the car now you want to find your jacking point which will be marked with a little arrow an indentation on the seam near the back jack up the car just take the weight slightly and then you can loosen the wheel nuts get your center cap little clip put that in there pull your cap off Use your security tool, do that one first. Just break the nuts off, you're not taking them off. Nip them back up. Make sure you put a chock under the front wheel because you're going to be uh, taking the handbrake off so you don't want the car moving about. And then we're going to jack the car up, put the axle stand on underneath make the car all safe, take the wheel off, put the wheel underneath the body for extra security. That's the security device. <laughs> On these cars there's a security when you tilt the vehicle when it's locked. It's to alarm will go off uh, presuming the car's pinched. Take the wheel off. Wheel stuck on. Well, it's stuck, corroded round the centre cap. Wheel stuck on. Put some WD around there. Let that soak a bit and then we'll come back and try and get the wheel off. So it just shows you that the if you don't put any copper ease around the centre cap, this is what you get. You get a wheel that, that won't come off. And you can see how, how much uh, how tight it is. Hopefully that, that will just penetrate enough so I can knock it off. So I've left the wheel soaking with some WD-40 on and it should be able to get it off now. The rear brakes on this car are different to the front ones in that the rear caliper incorporates the handbrake cable mechanism. This is an automatic system that doesn't need adjusting but it, within that it means that the rear piston in the caliper needs to be wound back in and you'll need a tool for that which is readily available to buy fairly cheap. You'll need to make sure you get the right tool for the uh, size of piston. The caliper works in the same way as the front one, whereas it will slide on two pins, one at the top and one at the bottom. But the pins are slightly different in this case, whereby an outer locking bolt fits through the caliper into the slide pin, locking both together. First spray the bolts with penetrating fluid and leave for a while. You need two spanners, one to hold the slide pin and then want to undo the outer bolt. You need a good ring spanner and you need to make sure it's on firmly otherwise you could round the bolt off. So take that one out. Take the top bolt out. Take the caliper off. Take the pads out. In this case I'm going to replace the disc so it doesn't matter if I put a screwdriver behind. 
you won't want to do that if you were used, just replacing the pads. Just knock that out. We have to wind this piston back. This is the winding tool. Uh, there's two parts to it. What we need to do is you need to locate the tool in these two slots here on this one. So you put the tool in like that and then you put this slider in and that goes up against the outer part of the caliper like so and then when you tighten it up so these can be a bit stiff it's a good idea to clean this and what you don't want is, is dirt going into this piston you just wind the piston back into the cylinder should go back in nice and smoothly at the same time you're pushing fluid back up into the master reservoir which you want to be checking periodically if it gets too full then you can take it out so wind this fully in I think that's it now now the piston is fully back now you clean these parts where the pads will be up against and clean the top of the piston and clean up all the corrosion very important not to let any dust get behind this seal to take the disc off we need a T30 Torx take that out never over tighten those when you put them back it's that bit of lock tight on it it should come out, hoping without taking the carry off. Yes. Sometimes you have to take this carrier off, which is a bit more of an involved job, but they design them now to take the discs off easily. So we're going to clean these areas up here, where the pads are going to go. This has to be lovely and smooth, so clean these up, get all the build-up of corrosion off. See, these are, these are old ones and they're tight. And that's, that would cause the back brakes to seize. All brakes you need to spend a lot of time on. Brakes are very important for obvious reasons. So you clean all this inside of here up, get all this debris off, clean all these up and then we'll put it back together. Put a screw, old screwdriver, scrape all the loose, loose rust off, all the build up. All that wants to come off. And then your wire brush. I can't stress more that these parts need to be completely smooth and down to the original metal. These, these have to allow the brake pads to slide backwards and forwards. You got your new brake disc. These surfaces are very often covered in a small amount of oil to protect them so they don't go rusty. Um, so you, you need to remove that before fitting them. Uh, you have to clean all the, the hub flange up and I usually put a little bit of copper ease just around the centre of the bearing hub here which is where it, the disc often gets corroded and finds it difficult to get off so if you put a bit of copper ease on that, that solves that problem. You only want a little bit. It's just on that area so you can be able to get the disc off up in the next time. Wipe any excess off. Make sure you don't get any on the disc itself or the pads. Put the disc on. Remember the hole meets up to the, this grub screw here. You just sl slide in there. Put the grub screw back. This just holds the, the disc on so it doesn't have a lot of torque on it. And you want to be able to get it off the next time. It's the wheel nuts that hold the disc on itself. So now we can put the brake pads in. And these go and slide on your clean carrier there. 
We've got a grip, grip on here which grips onto the back of the caliper and the piston and these are springs which go at the back of the caliper and hold it in place and then these little hooks hook down to the bottom of the carrier there and these need to slide backwards and forwards so all this needs to be clean and then you want to put a, a dab of copper ease on these parts only, only get it on, on there and on the back and on the pad itself just a little bit you only want a small amount put the one at the rear the one at the front and then slide the caliper over the top you've got to push these pins in slightly to get the caliper in so you've got to push it and hold it in and then put the nuts on usually with the brake pants you get a set of new a new nuts with Loctite on so always fit these and always fit them to the correct specified torque they're quite shallow bolts so that's when you when you unfasten them you, if you get a ring spanner like this I wouldn't recommend one of these uh, ring spanners. You want um, a six-sided ring spanner that fits perfectly, whereas these 12-sided ones tend, tend not to grip as well. But whatever you use, you've got to make sure it's on fully to uh, and hold it on, otherwise you'll round these nuts off and then it becomes a difficult job to get off. Remember to put your spanner on the locking bolt put the wheel back on take the axle stands out lower the car to the ground and take the side stand out recheck the brake fluid level and then go into the car and press the brake pedal several times to build up some pressure then recheck the brake fluid level again but then consider bleeding the whole braking system this will remove any old fluid and any air remaining in the system and you can find out how to do this in my other video on how to bleed the whole braking system i'll leave a link in the description and a link at the end of the video test the brakes working correctly before driving the vehicle when you've done all that you should be good to go Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. It really helps me make more videos for the channel. And hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video.